One of the most popular Bible verses that slapped on the car bumpers and even toted into sporting events is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. My first problem with this overused illogical statement is that there's no reason for God to make any form of sacrifice in order to pay for the sins of humankind. Who is he making the sacrifice to? Whose forgiveness is he seeking? To whom does death, that is the wage of sin, get paid? He's making the sacrifice to himself, and if you actually think about it for two minutes rather than swallowing the story whole and ignoring any plot holes, you must arrive at the conclusion of how illogical it is. The second problem is the emphasis on the alleged sacrifice, both on the part of God and the part of his Son. Why is it so special that Jesus was God's only begotten Son? Does God have a low sperm count or a narrow urethra or something? Couldn't he have as many sons as he wanted? Not to mention that I'd be a wealthy man if I got a dollar every time a religious person told me that we're all God's children. Besides, God's apparent son ended up in heaven for eternity with his father. How is that giving his son? If anything, the passage should say that he lent his only begotten son for three days and had him return with a couple of holes in his appendages. If I give you my lawnmower, then take it back three days later and never let you see it again, is it fair for me to say that I love you so much that I gave you my only lawnmower? From Jesus' perspective, this isn't a sacrifice either because he didn't really give up his life. He left a planet full of people who hated him, physically abused him, and misunderstood him to spend eternity in paradise. Mind you, I'm humoring the existence of God and Jesus here as it says in the Bible. Now, if you believe a man named Jesus did exist, but wasn't God in human form or the Son of God, but believe that he really was, actually died but never came back, that would be more of a real sacrifice than if Jesus really was God or the Son of God. Granted, the sacrifice wouldn't do anything for anyone, but at least it would be a real sacrifice. Christians talk about this sacrifice as if we're standing in the street and the wages of our sin were a Mack truck barreling towards us and Jesus came and pushed us out of the way accepting death on his own. Now, that would be heroic for a person to do, but if after a guy pushed you out of the way of a truck and died himself instead, you learn more about that guy, um, what if the information changed things a little bit? What if you learned that he could have stopped the truck by making it disappear or with a remote control or by alerting the driver or make the truck never exist in the first place? Then would it still be a brave and noble sacrifice for that man to choose the one method of stopping the truck or rather stopping the truck from hitting you that would require him to die a brutal and bloody death? I'd say that would make him suicidal. And if he knew that he was going to spend eternity in bliss afterwards, then I wouldn't blame him for seizing the quickest excuse to die. The word him in the last part of this verse must refer to Jesus because the H isn't capitalized, and therefore it can't refer to God. Because apparently God's so important that you even have to capitalize the first letters of pronouns referring to him. Anyway, it claims that whosoever believes in him, being Jesus, should not perish but have everlasting life. It's a good thing that it says should rather than would or will, because every Jesus believer I know is every bit as mortal as the rest of us. Millions of Christians throughout history have in fact perished and died. Oh, you mean the kind of everlasting life that happens after your life stops lasting. <laughs> okay, well, in that case, it's a very nice sentiment that because of an impotent God who lent us his only son for a few days, all we have to do is believe in him and we'll live forever after we die.